At the beginning, I would photograph myself as a character. So going back to playing myself, but a version of myself, me but not really me, I started making these cutouts of myself, simply from like prints made on cheap paper, things that couldn't stand on their own, but they became these like paper masks that I was making. I was putting them in drawers, hiding them from myself, and I forget about them. And then when I open a drawer, there's like my face staring back at me. It led to these things, to these prop making of these photographic limbs. Mask of my face in different material, paper, cloth, these cardboard cutouts, 3D printed. This is a cutout of me as a classical figure. This is a cutout of me in my natural form, deadpan. At the beginning, the process was the same, making a photograph, a self-portrait and then sending it off to a third party company that would fabricate these props for me. When making the cutouts, I have to, every once in a while, change and update the way I look. My colleague and friend, Pixie Liao, um, recommended me using LaGuardia Print Studio. They were really amazing to work with. They um, taught me the part of the process of making a 3D printed face of myself. I'd schedule an appointment and walk in and they would do the scan of myself using these uh, cameras and scanners that are used in prosthetic limb fabrications. They used medical grade cameras to capture my likeness. And what was different about this mask made with LaGuardia Print Studio was that my image was being rendered more accurately. Opening a box with my face staring back at me is a very profound experience of like, oh, wow, am I really this body? <laughs> am I this thing that I inhabit? Any photograph I see is staged in some sense, even street photography. There's already a world that is staged for you. The act of photographing for me, there is that dislocation of truth. I don't think like when I make photographs of myself that there are so, that there's so much like this immediate autobiographical like self-portrait. Like this is my diaristic take of my time here turning the camera to myself, there has to be this kind of performative gesture. Self-portrait photography has especially been tied together with identity so much that it's become, I don't know, a synonym for it. It becomes so overt, very straightforward in a way that this is what identity looks like. This is the surface level. I'm not interested in talking about my identity in such a straightforward way with my photographs. I think first and foremost, I am interested in how truth is easily dislodged. I feel like that would be fun. I kind of improvise a scene that I find myself in. Um, a lot of times it's n it goes back and forth. There's no set routine or rules that I um, abide by. I will find myself into an, an interesting scene or set or find something in the back of my mind that comes back to me. I want to make unique prints that can't be easily replicated. So in replicating my own body, I'm denying this photographic way of copying. 
So there's only a specific way of looking at this image. Moment of truth. Better. I love that. There's definitely hair in the I think I declared myself a, as a photographer after seeing Sandy Scoglin's work at the Brooks Museum. I believe it was Revenge of the Goldfish. It was so large. I'd never seen a photograph so big before. And it really changed everything for me. Like, this can be a career, this can be a job, but this can be my main thing. I grew up in the South and then realized that I was queer later on. Uh, there were a lot of uh, mediums that didn't have people that looked like me. And I think I didn't have that vocabulary to describe it then. But there was something really there in the undersurface that I think I'm trying to really dig out of myself um, and finding ways to control my own representation. How do I arrive at my own self? The idea that I can photograph a photograph of my body has been kind of freeing in a way where I get to direct, I get to sit in at the same time, I get to photograph myself without having to physically be in front of the camera. Part of my way of photographing is that I continuously photograph that they're being made simultaneously with one another. I don't really stop and start a project. A lot of times I have found myself going back and adding to or creating a spiritual sequel in a way. So part of like the way I think about my work or have been trying to describe my work is that it's best seen as an anthology. With Life Assembly, those photographs are made by looking at antiquated approaches to photography. So I made tin types, I made uh, silver gelatin photo booth strips. Um, but the idea that I'm denying this replication, this addition that happens and occurs in, pho in photographic prints, with making these singular photographs that can't easily be replicated. I'm only here to leave, it's more about copying my body. They're surrogate devices, they're doubles, they're like twins. They're my old self. Using different genres of photography have been interesting to see what a fashion photograph would look like, what a still life photograph would look like um, that is a self-portrait. I think recognizing myself in my own work has been the motivation. There's something about photographing oneself that is elusive. I think that means to say that identity is this elusive thing that we're all chasing. Um, mostly just taking an educated guess with the camera and trying to figure out what is myself, what is my true self, what is my photographic self the same as my self self. There is something about growing and thankfully with seeing this 10 year project, I'm hoping that I approach the pictures differently. I mean, the cameras have changed, the rules have stayed the same. There's a Dorothy Parker quote, it's like, I hate writing, I love having written. <laughs>